diverse women are the sleeping giant in America. Becoming self-made is the ticking clock for women. It's not if, but when. I believe this is an incredible time to be entrepreneurial. The new goal is to become self-made. Let me show you how. I want to thank Coke because I wrote this book. I've been all over the country teaching women and men how to become self-made. It's a, an initiative they have called 5 by 20 to empower 5 million women by the year 2020 in entrepreneurship. And we're almost at that number. I went to work for CBS a couple of years later as a reporter. And I went around the country interviewing people. And one of those people that I interviewed was a man named Norman Lear, who you may know, a very legendary producer. And he and his partner had just bought the first Spanish TV station in America. And they offered me a job to basically go work for them. I was like the only Latina they met. And at the time, I was very much like, are you kidding me? I'm going to be a network correspondent at CBS. And the two of them said to me, he and his partner said to me, you're Latina. Do you, I, go, I go, don't you want to work for a Latino thing? And I go, no, it's kind of, that feels like yucky to me. And they said, don't you know that the Latino market is a multi-billion dollar market and you're going to be employee one of a huge content business? And when they said that to me, I was like, I think I should go work for these guys. I'm going to bet on people versus CBS or versus whatever. And I think you guys have to think about that because people are the ones that take you to the next place. And I think that was the single best decision of my life. Imagine if today you had been employee one of Google or Netflix or Amazon. Now, I worked there for a number of years, and then they sold it. Before it became Telemundo, they sold it. And I was distraught. And I said to them, how could you guys do this to me? How could you sell this and not tell me? And they're like, young lady, these are our chips. Go get your own chips. And so I decided I'm going to go start my own company. It's going to be a production company. I'm going to make content. I knocked on every door in Hollywood. I went to see every company. And for four years, you guys, I didn't make a penny. I didn't sell one show. Nothing happened. And I didn't give up because when I had been with Norman Lear and Jerry Parencio, the times I had spent with them, they said, when, I, when we were your age, we started a business, we made no money for 10 years, and then it hit big. And so I thought, well, I'm only on year four, <laughs> but my parents were losing it. Por favor, go get a job. You're losing your looks. Get with it. You know, do something. And I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And in the middle of all that, one of the companies I had hit up was HBO. And the president of HBO at that time calls me up one day and says, listen, we really don't have any shows for you to produce and you have no real experience, but we want to launch HBO in Latin America. Can you help us? In the trajectory of your artsy-fartsy career, things will show up. You say no to nothing. You don't know where that journey is going to take you. I helped them. I went to Latin America because I spoke Spanish. Nobody at HBO at that time spoke Spanish. I went to Latin America, I helped them launch HBO, and as a result, they kind of fell in love with me. Then I get a call from a guy, I didn't know who he was. He's like, come and see me in California. It was Rupert Murdoch. He was getting ready to buy Fox, and he goes, I want to launch six channels in Latin America. And I said to him, I want to make shows. Can you give me a deal to make shows? And he's like, young lady, distribution comes before content. When you're the queen of distribution, you'll be the queen of content. I say all this because there's a parallel to right now with Netflix and Disney and all the streamers. Distribution always comes before content. The other thing nobody tells you is, how much does it take to make movies and TV shows? A lot. If, you, if people don't feel confident that you can manage their money, they're not just going to hand you the money. So all those other things that I did gave me the experience to be able to manage money. This is not a world that chooses you if you don't choose yourself. If you guys didn't apply, you would not be here, right? This is the most competitive industry, maybe this and tech now. If you don't choose yourself, if you don't declare yourself, if you don't love yourself enough to think that you deserve to get the thing, you're, nobody's gonna hand it to you on a silver platter because sometimes it's daunting. Sometimes you feel like, I can't compete with those people. They're so much better than me. You better fake it and act like you can and declare yourself 
because you're not going to get there if you don't choose yourself. It's your voice. So think of it when you hear somebody sing a cover and they sound just like the singer and that's how they begin to practice. But eventually you've got to find your own voice. There is no true empowerment until you have your own money. Let me tell you something. You guys think, oh, I'm going to make this little movie. I'm in love with it, blah, blah, blah. And somebody gives you the money to make it. Guess what? It's not your movie. Somebody gave you the money. And if they tell you you have to change something, you have to change it. The only way you get to make your own art is if you make a lot of money or make money at something else and make your own thing. And all of you have the ability in this age to make your own content on so many platforms with your own money direct to your customer. Don't just think your art is going to empower you because that's like woo-woo thinking. It's not true. It's not real. Self-made is a mindset that you have to cultivate and the mindset is that you live in two parallel tracks, mission and money. And so that means that you never are ashamed of whatever you have to do to make money while you're doing your mission. And it also means that money comes before mission. And I know that sounds like the opposite of what everybody tells you, but the truth is that if you are living hand to mouth, you're gonna do things that you're ashamed of. You're gonna do things that you're not proud of. So never be ashamed to make money so you can do the right things in your mission. One of my bosses said to me, young lady, when you make money, you better make money while you sleep. And I go, is he speaking in a foreign language? I have no idea what he's saying. But he was telling me the biggest truth that no one tells you. The money you make in this country and the money you save, if you don't invest it, you're not going to make it to the end of your life. I don't care if you're Steven Spielberg or you're a plumber because that, the business of being an actor doesn't always make it to the end of your life. You have to save money. You have to invest that money. That means diversify. How do we become self-made? The number one thing is we have to change our mindset from instant gratification to goal orientation. Go to the end of your life and start visualizing who are the people that I want to grow up to be. It's not about just being rich or successful or famous. It's rich in every way. Cherry pick the people that you see that are 50. What does good, a good version look like and what does a bad version look like? So you have a clear picture because life is about reverse engineering when you see success Copy it. Ask them. Read about them. Maybe it's a famous person. But you better start visualizing the life you have because people that don't visualize exactly what they want don't get it. If you don't write things down, if you don't ask yourself, what do I really want? Sometimes we're afraid to say it because we're like, oh, what if I jinx it? No, write it down. Say it. And if you don't think big, you're not going to get to big. You're not going to sacrifice what you need to sacrifice to get to big. I wish somebody had told me that to make it in your career and in your life, you have to not just deal with fear and failure. You have to make fear and failure your best friend. Do you know how many times I have failed? My failure reel would be three times as long and we'd be crying the whole night. Everyone is afraid all the time. And when I'm afraid, I just go, do it anyway, do it anyway, do it anyway. Those of us that come from you know, minority cultures, we're told, no, I don't do that. I, it's, the, it's our parents' baggage. And we think that when fear shows up, we're supposed to not do it. No. When fear shows up, you must do it. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? You're going to fail. Guess what? In your personal life, you will fail. In your business life, you will fail. And around the corner from many failures is your greatest success. And the only people that get to that success are people that stick to it. I think that to, be, to have a great life, you're going to eventually see that you become congruent personally and professionally by connecting the dots of all the things that are meaningful to you. And that is the journey you are on. It's going to take you a lifetime, but that's what it is. It's not if, but when. I hope, I hope you really heard that. So my favorite word in Spanish is adelante, because adelante means, like, you can say adelante, move forward. But it's adelante, like move your butts. Nothing is coming to you on a silver platter, nor should it. We cannot be victimized. We have to be victors. We have to go get it. We have to go after opportunities. You have to apply to everything. And you cannot let one or two or 20 or 50 disappointments get you down. 
You have to visualize it. You have to declare it. And you have to go get it. So I say to all of you, adelante. <laughs>